exposes their true personality. They need to heal from their past problems. Hey guys, my name is Victoria and welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about dating and specifically the green flags that you can look out for to know that you are dating the right person. And if you're not seeing them, you're probably dating the wrong person. <laughs> I've had plenty of dating experience and now I'm in a long-term happy and healthy relationship and I looked out for all of these. So if you're also looking for a long-term healthy relationship, these are going to be essentials, things that you're going to want to see in your person. Here are 10 green flags that you should look out for when you're dating someone new. Number one, they're a little nervous on the first date. This is actually a really good sign. This means that they're excited and a little worked up because they're trying to get to know you. And that's kind of an intimidating process. And yes, this isn't always the case. There are some rare people that really just love meeting new people, can take dates easily, but the average person should be a little nervous for their first date with someone new. If you're going on a first date, you're trying to make a good impression, you're trying not to slip up or do something weird. I think that if someone is nervous on the first date, that means that they like you and they're trying to do their best. I always kind of stay away from people that are very smooth talking, already know what they're doing, and can talk their way up. I have found in my experience that while those people can be super attractive, their intentions are not the best. So I steer clear of those people and look out for people who are genuinely interested in wanting to get to know you and are excited to get to know you. Number two, they're good listeners. When someone is not a good listener, sometimes it can be kind of subtle and it'll take a little while to figure that out. And sometimes it can be blatantly obvious, but either way, the person that you are dating should want to get to know who you are and will give you a chance for you to speak. And while you're talking about your interests and your hobbies and everything you like and what you do and your family, they should be right there in the moment, listening to you with eye contact. You want to date someone that is eager to hear more about you. If someone just keeps talking about themselves and all of their achievements and it just goes on and on and on and you've realized that you haven't talked for the past like 10 or 15 minutes, they're going to do that for the rest of your relationship. They're going to put themselves before you. So that's why you want someone that is really good at listening. If you're on a date where someone just doesn't want to listen and would rather talk about themselves it kind of can sound like they're trying to sell themselves to you, almost like an interview. Just be aware about how much time you have had to speak and when you're talking about yourself, are they actually there or are they on their phone? Or is their mind somewhere else? Because this is really important and it's going to determine how they're going to act in the rest of your relationship. Also a pet peeve of mine, if they interrupt you constantly, just End it right there. Like, if they cannot listen to you finish a sentence, no way, no way, that's unacceptable. Number three, they don't initially dump their baggage onto you. Someone who isn't healed from past trauma or relationships is probably going to bring up these things on the very first date because they're going to want to speak it out, all of their issues and their problems, but you don't want that on the first date. If someone talks about their exes or huge family issues on the first date, there's a real problem. This person isn't ready to enter a relationship and and focus their energy on someone else. They need to work on themselves first. They need to heal from their past problems. This can also be a potential sign of insecurity. And with insecurity comes things like possessiveness in relationships. I've dated people where in the first couple dates, they do this, they dump their baggage, and of course I listen, I want to comfort them. But then as it goes further into the relationship, they're not healed and they cling. That is likely what would happen if they come in with these unsolved problems. Just continue to ask yourself, is this person ready to be in a relationship? Is this person stable enough to give me love and receive love back? Number four, they treat a waiter or a waitress or anyone else in the service industry 
really politely. This is such a green flag and this determines their whole personality, basically. How someone treats service people exposes their true personality. If they're rude to a waiter, if they don't tip, if they're impatient with them, that's how they treat other people. And while they might be putting up a front initially, while time goes on in your relationship, that front, that wall, that mask is going to come down. You don't want to date someone that dehumanizes others and rather you want someone that greets the waiter and talks to them like an acquaintance in a friendly manner like a human being. It is really not that hard to treat waitresses or waiters like a human being and politely with kindness so if they can't even pass that step forget about it. But that's why going out on a dinner or a lunch date in the beginning of the relationship, whether that's your first date or your second, is a really good idea. See how they react when communicating with other people. Number five, they respect your boundaries. You can notice this in a plethora of different ways. For example, if you don't reply back to them, are they going to give you a thousand messages asking where you are, why you haven't gotten back to them? That is an invasion of privacy and it's breaking boundaries. Now, of course, how much time you spend with someone in the dating phase is completely up to y'all, but if they want to spend almost every minute together and that's not really your thing, you'd rather have some space once in a while and that just clashes and they feel like you're ignoring them because of that, that's a real, real problem. My boyfriend and I talk about boundaries fairly often. We try not to see each other several, several times in a week because we have our own worlds and that's totally okay for now. Boundaries also factor into your emotions. If one of you has a problem and you don't really want to talk about it, then you should be able to keep that to yourself because that's kind of how I am. If I have a small problem and I don't want to talk about it, it's not like it'll bubble up inside of me, but I need to work on it by myself. So I just say, hey, look, I'm dealing with something, but I just don't really want to talk about it. My boyfriend always respects that and vice versa. Some issues of mine I won't talk about. Some of them I'd rather keep to myself. If someone is digging for information on something you're dealing with or your past that you don't want to talk about, that is a breakage of boundaries. You should have a personal little bubble, even if you're dating someone, because you're an individual person. You're not in a marriage. You should have your own space to have your own things to think about. <laughs> Number six, they have some sort of goals or aspirations in life. It's really awesome to find someone who is passionate about something and is driven and motivated by something in their life, whether it's their career, whether it's a hobby, something that motivates them is a good thing. Not only is someone who has goals and aspirations and is motivated a really interesting person, but it means that they have some sort of a plan for their future. Having a little bit of stability is a really awesome thing. And it's not like they need to know exactly what they're going into if they're in college, um, exactly where they want to live. But if they have career goals or family goals, financial goals and personal goals, which do count, working on yourself is always a really awesome thing. It shows that they're a hardworking, well-rounded individual. Believe me, you don't want to get stuck with someone who really doesn't care where they're going in life. They don't know what's next. They don't really want to think about it because that person doesn't have the ability, the resources to evolve into a bigger, better, more intelligent, mature human being. Number seven, they can express their feelings. This is a really, really big one and this can be difficult to find. If someone can express their feelings to you, then they can probably communicate a lot better than others can. And I always say that communication is key in a relationship. Wyatt and I have always made that clear in our relationship that communication is always number one. It's the best to solve problems and get over hurdles. If you're dating someone that shuts down and doesn't talk about their problems and yet puts that negativity onto you, that can be a really big 
big issue. It will cause you worry. It will cause you pain. It'll make you feel like that you did something wrong, even though that's probably not the case. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, non-binary, anything in between. Communication and being able to express your emotions is a big factor in how your relationship is going to play out and how healthy it's going to be. Avoid dating people who pent up their feelings and eventually lash it out on someone else or on themselves and rather find someone that can tell you how they feel. I feel sad because maybe this happened or I feel sad and I'm just dealing with it on my own and that's how I am comfortable dealing with it. Because someone who is not able to handle their own emotions probably won't even be able to take on yours when you're upset. Number eight, they're comfortable talking about finances. Yeah, this kind of goes off the trail a little bit, but finances are really important. I remember on White and I's second date or so, uh, we went to the arcade and then to a place to eat. And when we got the bill, we both put our cards down and he who grew up in the south was super confused because he thought that he had to pay as a man whereas i grew up in the north and i'm a big feminist so i also put my card down thinking we'll just split it <laughs> at this point it might be kind of weird to talk about finances especially early in the relationship but i'm telling you it's not that crazy, it's really important. No matter what your beliefs are in finances, such as are they more conservative and you prefer the man to pay and the woman to not and both of y'all are okay with it, both y'all should be okay with it. Or you're a little more modern and prefer to split things, whether you guys like to spend more on eating out and luxury things, or you guys like to save up a lot and spend it on something more essential, these things are very important. The level at which you talk about finances does completely depend on you. Are you going to talk about all of the loans that you have and all of the debt that you have? That is up to you. Eventually, it's really important to talk about in a relationship, but on the first couple dates, it probably doesn't matter. But it's important to know that you're dating someone who is either more of a spender or a saver or even someone who likes to work a lot and make a lot of money. This will help with other financial problems down the road. Number nine, they are able to apologize. Now, of course, this will only come up if something happens and they need to apologize, but it's actually a green flag if someone is able to apologize without shifting the blame on anything. Because at the end of the day, everyone in a relationship is going to mess up and do something wrong. That's not necessarily a red flag, but being able to solve the problem, work through it and accept that they did something wrong and apologize is super healthy. Just bear that in mind next time that you get into a small argument or a bickering. If someone has done wrong, do they apologize? The last thing that you want is for someone to say something like, well, I'm sorry that you took that the wrong way. That's not apologizing. That's just shifting the blame. Someone who owns up to their mistakes is really mature and will be ready to go further into a relationship where the arguments or the problems might be a little heavier than that. And the number 10 green flag, which I think is super important, is that they remember the little things. If they remember the little things, it means that they're so attentive and they really care about you. Whether it's remembering your favorite coffee flavor at Starbucks or all of your friends' names or a line in your favorite movie, these little things are what make up you. And so the fact that they remember them is so sweet and so caring. Before Wyatt and I were even in our relationship we we're still in like the dating phase I guess you would say we were going out on dates he remembered that I worked at a museum it's called Old Sherwood Village if y'all want to look it up and it's basically a village set in like the 1830s so all of the buildings are older it's very historical it's American history I loved working there it was a dream come true and I have so many memories there and what he did was he found the exact barn. I didn't even give him the name of the barn. Technically this is the barn and this is the farmhouse, 
but he found this picture online. I didn't even give him the name of the farmhouse and he printed it and he framed it and gave it to me. There are several houses and farms and buildings in Sturbridge, but he found the exact one just by clues that I gave talking about Sturbridge and he framed it for me. I think that attentiveness is everything. And remembering the little things about one another just shows that they're so intrigued by you and they like you so much and they want to get to know you. Well, thank y'all so, so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like down below or a comment. I love hearing from y'all. And if you wanna see more from me, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notifications every single time that I post and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye guys.